Hey everybody, final thoughts time for Santorini Riddle of the Sphinx. Before I get that, please remember this was a sponsored preview. And with that out of the way, oh, I'm so happy. Uh, I covered Santorini, it feels like a million years ago, back when Jen and I were still living in Malta, and I was so blown away by it back then. You know, the incredible over-the-top production values, even my prototype was stunning, and the final game looks even better. And my only problem was, is brilliant. As the incredibly elegant and simple gameplay was of, hey, move and build, use the special power of your god, and just try to outwit your opponent. As sharp as it was, man, it was a cutthroat battle of wits. Every game is all about trying to outmaneuver and squeeze your opponent and trick them and bluff and all kinds of stuff just to get them to where they can't move anymore. And um, yeah, it was super smart, but totally not for me and Jen because... We like to do our own thing, or if we're interacting, we like to work together rather than towards each other's ruination. So you can imagine how excited I was when I found out that a co-op slash solo mode was coming for this new expansion, Riddle of the Sphinx, and I am very impressed by it. It is so sharp and so clever. Does not change the core precepts of the game. There's still all these gods with the special powers, although now you're cycling through a whole bunch of them really quickly, which is super satisfying. Uh, um, and every time you play, even if you're playing with the exact same deck of gods that are available to you, the order these cards come out will radically change how any given riddle feels to solve. Because, um, you know, that's what they all are. They are all fiendishly clever riddles, to puzzles to solve by getting your workers into the right place at the right time to build the right type of thing to complete one, two, or ideally all three objectives um, before you run out of time, which is to say before you run out of god cards, before you run out of building pieces in your stockpile. And I'm it's, it's a blast. I mean, if you watched my run through, I mean, I only got a little ways in, but you could start to see how um, one, how you have to really be smart in figuring out where to move and how to you know leverage all your powers, but two, how things could radically change depending on which powers are available to you. And the fact that the game comes with this big multi-chapter storyline you can play through, that the more things, the better you do, the more things you unlock on this big thing by you know checking off boxes here, and uh, those can provide more flexibility too, because the more gods you unlock, and there's a ton. A metric boatload of gods in this game, all with unique powers and uh, you know different ways you can satisfy their quests and whatnot. That you can keep throwing different gods into the same riddles and uh, get stuff. And then also there are extra boons you can unlock, uh, you know, divine favors that you can use on particularly tricky ones if you need it to be able to get through. So the although you don't have to play that way, you could just open the book to any page you want, get the default god grab a couple more at random, quite frankly, and just see what you get if you don't care about all that storyline stuff. Although, I very much appreciate it. Uh, it's a nice addition. Yeah. Um, honestly, I would say about my only complaint here is there... You know, I, I, w w my wife and I, we have played... I don't know how many pages there are in this book. Uh, that Not all of them, but we played, I think, seven of the maps that come with this so far. And the maps all, the riddles all have an easy, medium, or hard challenge rating. We have found we've been able to beat them all. The, the challenging ones do give us pause, and there have been some close ones where, okay, well, we aren't going to ace this one, are we? We'd only get unlock two bonuses on the big map and all that, and we got to go back in again if we want to try and ace it. Maybe bring a different god in. But a lot of the missions you play are the easy and medium variety. I mean, geez, it, it's, I haven't done an exact count, but it feels like over half of them are easy and medium. And if you are a really experienced puzzly co-op player, you're going to find those particular ones, at least Jen and I found them a little bit too much on the easy side, a bit too easy to ace. And that's a high percentage of stuff that is, uh, you know, sometimes just straight up cakewalk type things. And I am hoping, hoping, hoping that the developers do work on a way. It's interesting. They have ways to make the game easier if you need it, because you can get more of those, div you know, divine gifts and all of that. But they don't seem, at least in my prototype, to have a ways to make levels harder 
and more challenging. The main way to make them harder is to complete all three objectives. But that's kind of what we were doing. Anyway. We were feeling like, okay, well, if we don't complete, if we don't ace it, we don't even consider it a win. So again, I haven't played them all. This is a prototype. Obviously, there's still tweaking and testing going on. Um, and don't get me wrong. It's definitely been a lot of fun trying to work our way through them. Even the ones that were, you know, pretty breezy, uh, it was still kind of, you know, fun to experience them and, and solve in different ways and all that. But it's a real standard thing. I, you know, it's almost, um, you know, kind of a requirement for co-op games to have variable difficulty levels. And so far from what I've seen, this game doesn't have it. And that's my one big complaint. I am hoping that by the time this goes wide and everybody gets their hands on a full retail edition of it, there will be ways that really experienced players have to just turn it a couple extra notches so you really, really feel the pain. So, so that the easy and the medium ones feel as challenging as the uh, ranked H for hard ones. The one I was just playing today was a medium. I'm pretty confident I'm going to make it through if I keep playing. Things are going pretty well. But, um, so I'd like this to be a little bit harder and so on. So, hold on folks, I just heard from the developers and they are in fact working on a uh, godlike difficulty level is what they described it. I don't have much information. What did they say? They said uh, ensures that the game will be a challenge uh, for uh, any level of puzzle solver. They'll be adding the godlike difficulty requires absolute perfect play and re also requires that you unlock specific gods and favors in order to ace uh, riddles at that particular difficulty level. So, I shouldn't have worried, folks. It looks like they're covering everybody. Now, let's get back to it. Otherwise, oh my gosh, Santorini is such a joy to play and just such a joy to look at. And now, it's a joy to share with others um, in a non-aggressive way where people are working to solve a series of riddles, uh, you know, play through a, you know, a simple but epic, you know, appropriately themed storyline, uh, narrative campaign, and yeah, I am just pleased as punch with Santorini Riddle of the Sphinx. And that was the preview, folks. Uh, you can hit that eye in the top right corner screen to go check out the Kickstarter page and learn more. Uh, otherwise, have a very, very nice day. Talk to you later. So long. Uh, bye bye.